So, yes, I guess what you said about the promised land. Uh, I, I didn't think that's too much of a factor for me. I, did, I didn't actually want to come. I was happy. I actually wanted to stay north. Um, but I guess now in, in hindsight, I'm very glad that I did come to London because I must say that it's very different to anywhere up north and it's a completely unique experience. And you, you do get that big city feel. Like, especially when, like, when, I'm, when I'm coming on the train and it's starting to pull in and you start to see all the sky rise buildings and you see the stadiums and you see that kind of stuff. You do get that, that bit of buzz. Um, and yeah, what you said about the red buses and stuff is so true. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it, it just gives the London feel. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have it when I was applying, but I guess now I definitely have it. I guess it's something that probably drug me back to London if I was to live there in the future, but I don't know about that yet. Mad. What was it like studying in London? Because I imagine it's mad expensive. Ah, oh, it's peak. Uh, I, I know, I know. I talk about the rent. <laughs> I'll leave that, leave, leave that conversation out. But um, yeah, it, it, it is very weird. It's very expensive for one. Um, but also at the same time, I'm like doing a bit, bit of tourism at the same time, seeing all the stuff that I've never seen before. Certain restaurants are only in London, and like certain like like um, attractions and cocktail bars that are like above the river and stuff like that, like duck, duck and waffle. Mm-hmm. That, that's like. And Leeds is a few places like that, but it's not really to the, the extent that London is, where there's so many places that have ridiculous views and so many places to go to go to. Um, yeah, yeah. So uh, sometimes I don't feel like a student. I feel like I'm just like I don't even know. I'm just TJ wandering around London, seeing what's happening. Because <laughs> because yeah, East London's not really that that big and wow. It's really in my spare time when I go to the rest of it and get to explore it. Um, but it's, it's sick. Uh, if, if anyone, if anyone was considering studying in London, I'd say, yeah, I'd say it's the best time to do it, in fact. Because even though it's mad expensive, um, the student loan makes it more reasonable and you can kind of live at minimum, like, um, requirements, like, nothing fancy. But mm. to live there uh, with it, with your career, I think it might be a lot more di- difficult. Whereas in uni, I feel like you can kind of get, you can kind of get through it in a way with yeah, bursaries yeah. and student loans and stuff. Yeah, for sure. I think, um, on top of that, like when you're a student, you can afford to be poor. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. That's, yeah. There's no need to flex. You can literally walk into lectures with, um, with sliders and a do-rag <laughs> on. No, one, no one's going to say anything at uni. Like, <laughs> yeah. I, I would happily, like, I mean, I, I'm happy I went to Bristol because, because I live in London. I don't feel the same, I guess, tourist glamour of it. But I, just, I can just go down on a normal weekday. But yeah, yeah London is such a vibe, man. And like, I would happily walk around in a in sliders in a do rag if it meant that I could, you know, afford to live in London. Yeah, for sure. Like, yeah, because I'm I'm unsure about where I'll end up. I don't. I have no idea where I'll end up working once I graduate, if I graduate. <laughs> but um, I'm definitely glad I had the experience, especially five years to live in London. It's quite quite a lot of experience. I'm glad I had that. For mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. Do you think, like, did he, we talked about it before we started recording, like, the people you meet there. Do you, because people always say before you start, like, oh, you're going to meet your wife, you're going to meet your lifelong friends at uni. How would you say you, your experience was in terms of, like, the guys you met? Uh, that, yeah, this is, this is, about, you're reading my mind, man. This is something I've thought about as well. It's so, <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird for me, especially because I don't really come back to Wakefield that often. Um, okay. Christmas, Easter, summer. That's the only time I've ever come back. Um, so majority of the time, I'm basically, I'm basically living in London most of the time. And I, I even made the mistake of saying like, uh, occasionally, oh, I'm going back home. And when I say home, I actually mean London. <laughs> Mad. Exactly. I've just got it. Like, I, they're, both, they're both homes to me now in a way. Cause I've literally been there so much. I, I rarely come back here. Um, and yeah, so after spending so much time there and I come back and what's really good about my friendship group from like school and college is that, um, we still keep in touch a lot. Um, and especially, it might not be throughout the year, but if, if everyone knows we're back, like everyone's on it and it's like a massive reunion and it's a different type of friendship because obviously I've known these guys, most of these guys since at least year seven. So it's been at least 10 years in most cases or around that time, these friends. So obviously it's kind of a different type of friendship in a way where I like, I re- I really know these guys. Like I don't even have to, I don't have to, I don't have to like, Tend to be anyone else. I can literally be, I can say whatever comes to my mind, even if it's dark and twisted, messed up. <laughs> and I can, I can say whatever I want. Like, there's literally, there's no filter. I feel like, I feel like I'm like, I'm with, I'm with family almost, uh, with my friends at home. And I think it's impossible to build that up. 
um, so quickly with friends that you need to know, to know in a way how it's going to go. Because for me, especially if I end up going back to Wakefield, I don't know how those friendships are going to pan out. Um, if I was, if I was with someone when I graduated as well, because I'm not sure if mm-hmm. I want to stay in L- London. And if they were from London, it'd be sticky because I don't know what I'll, I want to do. But at the moment, yeah, I do because since she's quite a small year, I've made really good friends and I hope I can sustain those in the future. Um, but it is weird to not see my home friends and then come back and then see them again and like rekindle this old, like 10 year old friendship, which was like really strong. And I'm like, man, I thought, I thought these guys existed. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah, I guess too, but Bristol's not too far from London, so. Yeah, let's, 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 let's say you, you met like really good friends or you met a girl that was, I don't know, from Scotland or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> While you were sitting in Bristol, what do you think would happen there? Do you think it's feasible to ever like risk moving away just for that one person or the group of friends? Like, mm-hmm. it's weird after graduation how this stuff's gonna pan out. Yeah, I hear you, man. I don't know, I've got, I've got a complete different perspective. I feel like most guys, like I talk to guys about this a lot and I, I feel like I'm very different to the norm. But the way I see it is like in a globalized world where we've all got social media, we've all each other's numbers and stuff. The yeah. difference between you being like my next door neighbor or you living in Australia is so hard to measure because you're always two seconds away on text. Yeah. Like, like two of my friends graduated recently and you know, they were, we were all in the kitchen talking about how I'd never teach each other again, crying and shit. I'm like, <laughs> You both live in London. You're still, you're going to see it. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Listen, Central Line is just over there. <laughs> Five stops. <laughs> literally, man, literally. And I, I kind of get it. Like, you, you, you referenced, um, Bristol versus Scotland. That's obviously a big distance. You can't, like, link your girl, I guess, as willingly, as freely. But, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like, when it comes to friends, I don't really see it as that deep because I feel like the distance is so hard to measure. And the way I see it, like, okay, a bit of a context, I guess, like the way I perceive success to be is like the amount of free time you have control over. Like, no matter how much money I'm earning, if I'm working 24 hours a day, I don't perceive that as success. Whereas if I'm earning like half of that, but I can do whatever the fuck I want, whenever I want, that's my level of success. Yeah. So, when I tie that back into people being like living wherever, you know, long distance, whatever, if I've got the time to see you, or even if I don't have the time, like if I want to see you, like I'll make that time, we'll make those plans, it will be sorted out. And that's why I don't really care as much. Like obviously again, like the Scotland versus Bristol thing, that kind of makes sense because if it's your partner, you really want to be around them physically as opposed to just texting all the time or like dropping by every now and then. But mm-hmm. As long as my life's, you know, going the right direction and everyone else's life's going the right direction, I don't really see an issue. I don't really perceive distance to be that big a thing in a, you know, globalized world like we have today. Yeah. Yeah. You, you make a good point. That's, that's definitely true. Also, but I also, I also think, um, sometimes I guess this is, I guess it's, it's, it's based on effort really, but like it's weird that, like, let's say last year, um, my birthday is like 22nd of July and I was still in uni at this time. And I celebrated my birthday, uh, with my uni friends, obviously. And mm. it was, it was sick. It was great. And I wasn't necessarily thinking, oh, I wish my home friends would be here. And I, it was, it was just good to have my friends there. That was, it was really good. This year, I was, um, because of COVID and all that, was supposed to be in uni, but I was, I was in Wakefield. I spent it with all my, um, friends from school and mm. stuff like that. And I don't know. I guess it's kind of weird, isn't it? Like, it's like, it's almost like completely switched. Like, it's completely, it's literally like a completely different group of people. There wasn't one person that was common in both of those birthdays. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so it's kind of weird. Like, when I'm, when I'm here in Wakefield and I say I, I start, I decide to live here and work here on my birthday and big events like that, does that mean I'm going to invite my friends from London and see whether they're even going to come over <laughs> all the way from <laughs> London? Like, uh, yeah, that's not, that's where like when it comes to like those like those big type of events or even yeah, it, it just takes lots a lot more effort. Even if you want you want to go for a quick meal, it's very easy for me to call my friends here and be like, let's just go like last last minute type of thing. Where if I was like <laughs> if I was like to one of my friends in London, I'll come to Wakefield for a meal. They'll probably tell me to, <laughs> <laughs> to go to <laughs> to go to certain places. <laughs> <laughs> oh 
Oh yeah. man, if, if he said, come wait for to get a new arms to wear, <laughs> I might catch a flight. <laughs> <laughs> what country is that in? <laughs> 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 it's our new chicken place or something like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. Funny. Interesting. What's it like up there actually? Because I've always, I mean, Bristol's diverse, London's diverse, but I've always had this weird conception that anywhere outside of London is just like, not, not mad racist per se, but like, <laughs> just, you, <know>. <laughs> <laughs> you just don't see, you don't see London like that. You don't see any brothers out in. I can't imagine seeing brothers in Wakefield. <laughs> Bro, have you looked at that, that group discussion? Literally, everyone's, everyone's literally blocking that that group. And even on my birthday, most people were. Yeah, I think that, I think it is a bit of a misconception. I think, especially the young people. Mm. Well, to be fair, no, no. I think it's, it's this. There's, there's like just like London. There's certain areas where you're more likely to find certain groups of people. Um. In the city centre, um, I'd say it's quite dominated by like elderly, elderly white women, I guess. Um, so I guess on the face of it, I, I, I think in the centre there's, there's like a cathedral somewhere in the city centre, and there's like a shopping centre near there, and that's just that's, yeah, that's just for old people really. Like, so I guess if you were to walk out into there, you'd be like, what's going on? <laughs> like, where are the young people? <laughs> Whereas if you go to an, another certain area, it'll be completely different. Like, um, the, the primary school I went to in year six was in a certain area and best believe there was two white people in our year, in our year group. Uh, brown. I was the only black one and everyone else was Asian. Everyone else was brown. Man, so you feel right at home in East London then. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I right. used to it. <laughs> Whereas, yeah, certain areas are like completely white. There'll be some areas that are a lot of black people as well. So yeah, it's actually quite diverse, I'd say. Um, but I guess there's obviously these like little mini, mini worlds where they're dominated by a certain race. Yeah, 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 for sure. That's interesting. I guess I was, I guess hinting more at like whether there was a culture clash coming to London where there's more diversity, but it seems like, yeah, your school seems like a, I don't know, I guess. To me, it still sounds like a, a one-off case. Like anecdotal evidence never really counts so much for me. Yeah. But but now it's good that you, you know, from a young age you realize that people are different. <laughs> it's not just a white man country at the moment. Yeah, no, I did. It, it honestly doesn't feel like that at all. Like I've, there's it's, diversity has always been there. Um. Yeah. Even, even at my high school, there was right around the high school was probably predominantly white, but there was a little neighborhood. Um called Agbrig and that was literally like loads of brown people so there was loads, there was a big group of um, Asians that came to our high school so I, yeah, I've, I've, always, I've always been used to diversity I wouldn't say it's anymore um, the, only, the only thing I noticed coming to uni was um, specifically East London was there was an even higher amount of Asian people and the, the one the one difference well I knew it straight away was it was weird because back <laughs> back in Wakefield um mm. We still appreciate, okay, the, the, that person's Asian, this person's Asian. But that, that's as far as it went. And I came to London and that, that Asian wasn't, <laughs> that Asian was not enough categorization anymore. People were like, oh, what, <laughs> what country are you from? And then after that, they'd be like, what part of that country are you from? Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. I was hearing, I was hearing my friends like, I was hearing, <laughs> my friends had like, Gujarati, Punjab. He was like, what are these like next countries in the city? Yeah, I'm just, um, Yes, so yeah, but here the really, really it's just it's just like Pakistani and Asian were the only words used. And then I, I got to uni, and then I was hearing Bangladeshi, like <laughs> again, Gujarati, Punjabi. Yeah, that's what it's like. Okay, there's clearly a lot more brown people <laughs> here than there was in Wakefield because I haven't heard any of these terms. They clearly feel a need for more categorization. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the only yeah. cool, cool, cool shock I'd have, I guess. Um, yeah, the, like, in the, like, Chowdhury is like a, a Bangladesh surname, right? I think. Mm. And that's when I noticed, and I, I noticed certain friends out here, and I'm like, oh my god, he's, is he Bengali? <laughs> 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 all, all this time, I didn't clock his last name you know, and where he's actually from, because in my head, yeah, literally, it, just Asian. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So that, that's the only clash, otherwise, everything else is pretty much the same. Mm-hmm. That's interesting. <laughs> I feel like that, I guess that level of nuance and like being specific where guys come from 
that I don't want to say it's normal in London, but like, I, I was always aware of that. I wonder if that's the thing that is prominent with like you know London guys or not. I, I got to ask my friends. I got to co- come back to you on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, it's definitely not for me. Like n- none of my friends have heard of any of those those words at all. I guess you know what? I'm just bait, and those always meme pages on Instagram. They started slightly using like <laughs> obviously London terms. So I think that's actually helped in a way. <laughs> <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of people think of this this London slug and um, even stuff about yeah they they occasionally they'll just, they'll just drop in like some Asian words <laughs> like like Gora or something <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and one of their captions and I'm like all right okay <laughs> I, I thought it was the dictionary <laughs> oh man I'm just bait is Brum right Birmingham I have no idea where he's from you know like I have no idea. I that's funny, yeah, man. I just have no idea. It looks mixed race or some, some sort. Of... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. A certain um, mutual friend of ours has been on I'm Just Bait, I'm pretty sure. Who? Oh. Certain, uh, certain TikTok star. Oh, swear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I just pressed the button again, and, and that's why it keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually pressing it, but it keeps, keeps pressing itself. Um, yeah, yeah it's um, a necessary uh, bleeping names out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you have to bleep? No, no, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> That's the problem. I'm saving you time editing here. <laughs> if you need me to do it again, let me know. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Man. Yeah, she she's been everywhere. She's been on so many pages. Uh, every, every every day I, I come on and I see her on a different page. <laughs> <laughs> it's nuts. It's nuts. 